salvation is expressed through loving somebody. If you think you're saved and there's no one to verify it by love, how can you say you love God? He says, how can we say we love God whom we have not seen and don't love our brothers whom we do see? I'm going to do it. I got a quote. See, and I think this is the only way you're going to get it. If you have not been loving people, you can't say you love God. My wife's not here. I'm clear, you ever feed your wife? Come over here. Because you, 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 he came in this church, man, he was flacco. Look at all this love. <laughs> that woman that put that in there. Come over here. Come over here. Now, now, I will show you. They, they, they reciprocated their love. She put this in her. She put that in her. What love got to do with it? She said, I'm going to get, I'm, she said, I'm going to get you big and you're going to get me big. They've been sharing the love. It's, it's like if you love me, you're going to do something. For God so loved the world that he gave. And you and I, we're going to close here. You and I have to get to a place where we have more than two people that, that can verify I know what you're saying. Because right now, 80% of the people in church lip service each other. You know I love you. A love is not a hug. A love is a snatch out of the pit. And you laying on the pit so they can't get back in it. The Bible says this, faithful are the wounds of a friend, a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Now come over here. What's, I'm going to call you Lamont. I'm thinking you're in France or something like this. Eugene. I ain't gonna kiss you. But my father kissed me, so he would kiss us all the time, day and night. And you know what? He was our friend. He didn't deceive us with a kiss. But you got people in church, love each other. Who are you wearing that dress? So they try to wish it was mine. <laughs> We got to get to a place where we realize, you know what? I want my love verified. Yes. I want somebody in the church to be able to tell God that I love them. Yes. I mean, that they, you know, that 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 I know they love me. Yes. Anybody here? Yes. I mean, you know, Him rescuing you will teach you how now to rescue somebody else. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> That's here. That's just my only altar call. I'm sorry, I came behind a preacher, but I'm okay. God wants you to learn how to love. And love. Go ahead. I love him. You know why? You know why I know I love him? Because of that. When I was, what was I? I was homeless, familyless, penniless. I had nothing. I was driving around, and he was at a church service. I picked him up. I put my church face on. I was driving him. Somebody left the car to drive people home. And it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock in the morning in Newark, Elizabeth Avenue, where they shoot you at. And I'm like, yo, man, I just dropped people off. And he said, can I give you something? I said, I looked at him, I said, you little dude, I'll just jack him up right here. Three o'clock in the morning, come on, man. I'm saved, but I ain't gonna get love. I'm not gonna just die for no reason. He said, can I give you something? I'm like, man, what is, what's wrong with this guy? It's a true story. He said, give me your hand. I said, oh, three o'clock in the morning, I'm parking Elizabeth Avenue. He takes my hand and he starts singing. And the prophetic song was my life. Wow. We began to talk about what I lost and what's going on. Wow. And I started crying. Wow. That was 20-something years ago, right? Wow. Wow. 
So that's why he can't do no wrong in my eyes. That's why he's not worried about what I say. Because <laughs> he made a deposit of love. How many realize that no matter what God does to you, you're not leaving him? But there are others, if you don't answer their prayer, they're gone. They're, they're, they're going to book because what? His love is not in them. Jesus said, I give you my words. And the words that I give you, they're from my Father. And who is he that keeps my word? They that love me. And I know my message was scattered here and there, but I know for this, for this fact that each and every one of us is going to have to practice love. Now, anybody here ever dated somebody? It's a whole version church. <laughs> this, is a, this, is a, this is a whole version <laughs> Anybody ever dated somebody? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Go on. Man, I, I, maybe I thought it was... No, it never what happened? You knew your response, they knew their response. We're in a love relationship with the Lord. It's a continual date. And it's not euphoria. You know, we 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 spend time in his presence just to bring his presence to the life of others. Yes, amen. When somebody's cast down, there's a lifting. When somebody's hungry, there's a sharing. You know, the hard thing about being in a church is time. <laughs> and I'm closing. I maybe though Mike said don't look at the clock, I, I must look at the clock. The only difficult thing about being in a church is you don't get a chance to see what a real church is about. Because many churches are based on budgets, time. The believers don't do what they ought to do, which is to show love. Every service is supposed to be a love feast. We're supposed to find out what's missing and fill the gap. If there's any sick amongst you, let the elders of the church anoint them with oil in the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. If they're committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. The whole premise of a church service is to make sure people are fixed. So as we close, we're going to stand to our feet because I'm out of time. We are, oh my goodness. I don't apologize for the length of my message because Pastor Junior gave you a, a feast that Pastor understand that I have to come back next week. Or if you want to hear Pastor, you gotta go down the road. We're here to finish this. You ready? God is requiring his church to love. That's not saying I love you, brother Mike. I love you, brother Luciano. It's not saying that. We, we have to get past lip service. Anybody ever got married? I'm willing to commit to you for the rest of my life. That was love. You probably, not saying you all did, but you know, you, 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 you possibly, not saying that you did, you possibly did physical expressions that were illegal, and they thought that was love. No, that wasn't love. Refraining would be love. Because love is looking right in God's sight. Jesus says, my father loves me. He said, I know my father loves me because I keep his commandments. I can't shake that. I, I, I've never read that in this full context. He said, my Jesus said it. It wasn't like Pastor said it. It wasn't like Jesus said, my father loves me because I laid down my life. And he was able to say, you, lo you love me if you keep my commandments. And what is his commandments, ready? Love God and love your neighbor as your son. Now, I didn't grow up. 
I grew up seven. I grew up seven out of eight boys, and that mean I grew up selfish. I did. I was a little greedy, fought for everything I had. So when I got saved, God had to remove that from me. And one thing I can say now that I'm saved, and you can probably say it too, I know how to share. Once I got saved, he took greed out of me and put sharing. You know why cults are accept, uh, successful to the seeing of the eye? They're commanded to do what the word of God says. We don't command you to do it, therefore you don't do it. If God was to tell you, if you don't love, you're not coming to heaven, would you start loving? Why aren't you living anyhow? Because Jesus said, who is he that loves me? He that keeps my commandments. We got to get to a place where love is no longer an expression of emotional high. It's got to be a sacrifice where you suffer pain. My God. My God. My God. It's got to be that. Hallelujah. Forgive me for saying this, fathers, because you learn through paying bills. The pain of getting up and working and working and working and paying bills and hardly ever hearing thank you, that's love. But that mother had to learn by pushing that baby out. That little invader. <laughs> didn't know you, didn't ask to come, said, well, you, you know what, you, I'm on the way and I'm going to take over. <laughs> they take over the body and they take over the mind. <laughs> What happens? Unconditional love. Is that thing? It's good to call it a thing. As soon as that baby comes out, there is an unconditional love for that because you know it was vulnerable. That's you and I. God knows you're vulnerable. God knows you can't do it on your own, but He needs us to give His love, to give His love, in us and start giving it out. So I'm gonna mess with that excited, but guess what? Come tomorrow. Come tomorrow, you need to find somebody to love. Not tolerate, to love. My son is 24. 89, 13, 24. I kiss him. He act like he don't like me. I do it in public. I do it in private. I'm going to kiss him. My father kiss me, I'm going to kiss him. Fathers, kiss your son. Teach him how to be affectionate because when you kiss, when a man kisses his son, it shows his son that somebody's stronger than me. Because a kiss shows not only camaraderie, but it also shows superiority. When a husband kisses his wife, she goes, yes. Come on. And she says, you can, you can do what you want. Come on. And God kisses us daily. He's always embracing us. And we got to get to a place where we are embracing one another. Not with platitudes. We have to be aggressive in love. You can't trust the UN. You can't trust your church. You got to trust the love of God that's in you. And some of you that are, your nickname is Hermit, you need to get rid of your, your shell and come out. Church is full of hermit crabs. <laughs> got to be aggressive. The world's coming to an end. Somebody needs to know that there can be love. Yeah.